This is Algebra 2, Chapter 4, Section 1, in which we will be graphing quadratic functions. When we talk about a quadratic function, we're talking about a function who has the highest power in it of 2. It's an x squared kind of thing. These things will typically have three terms, although they can have less. You have to have a quadratic term. That's your square term. You could have a linear term, plain x, and you could have a constant term, just a number. Okay. Looking at this function, for example, 2x squared minus 6x plus 3, the quadratic term is 2x squared, the whole thing there. The linear term is the minus 6x or negative 6x, and the constant term is 3. If one of those two terms is missing, it's not in the problem, then it would be 0. When we graph one of these things, we get a parabola. And parabolas are something I'm sure you've dealt with back in Algebra 1, but we're going to rehash a little bit of it. A parabola is a curved shape, kind of like a U, could be upside down. And the way that the parabola works is there's an axis of symmetry that divides it into two equal parts, mirror image of each other. This axis of symmetry goes through the turning point, which in a parabola we call the vertex. Now, when we graph a quadratic function, when we graph a parabola, we need to find a few points. We need to figure out where the axis of symmetry is so we can get the vertex and we like to have the y-intercept because that makes life easy. Your generic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c. The y-intercept is the point where x is equal to 0, and it turns out that this will just be the constant term. The axis of symmetry, there's a nice formula for it, negative b over 2a, or opposite b over 2a. Depends on how you want to read it. And then to find the values for the vertex, you take that axis number and you plug it back into the equation and find the value for the uh, y value. Then you have a point to work with. So let's look at this function and we're going to graph it. Now to graph it, they're going to ask us to find some information. The y-intercept, the axis of symmetry, and the vertex. And then we're going to make a table so that we can get some points to graph. And we're going to put the vertex in the center of the table. Well, the y-intercept is easy. 0, 6, the constant term, gives us that value. For the axis, we're going to play our opposite b over 2a. Plugging in b is negative 10, a is negative 5, do some arithmetic. The axis is x equals negative 1. Okay. Now to get the vertex, all we have to do is plug that number back into the function. And with a little bit of arithmetic, we find out that y is 11, so negative 1, 11. Now we're going to make a table, and I'm going to put that vertex in the center. And then I'm going to go up counting by ones, and down counting by ones. Because of the symmetry, I don't have to work as hard. If I'm careful here, if I pick the, same, the right points, go up one, up two, down one, down two from the center, now all I have to do is plug in one side or the other. When x is zero, we find out y is six. If you plug in negative two, you'll also get six because of symmetry. If you plug in 1, you get negative 9. Plug in negative 3, you also get negative 9. Symmetry again. So now it's just a matter of dragging these points on, which you can just plot yours. 1, 11, negative 1, 11. 0, 6, and 1, negative 9, and then select the pen tool, 
and draw this perfectly through. Okay. More or less, that's the shape of a parabola. They're either typically like this or like this. One of those two. They're not straight. This one kind of looks like they are because it's so steep. So try to put a little curve in it just to make sure you know it's not straight. And you'll get an opportunity to show us that right here to practice that because you're going to do the same exact thing we just did with this new equation, x squared minus 4x plus 3. Pause here, take a minute and solve that out, and then come back and check. Okay. Let's find the y-intercept first. That's 0, 3. Plug in your values into your uh, opposite b over 2a, and you find out x is 2. Put the 2 back into the formula, and you get a point negative 1. 2, negative 1 goes in the center of the table. Down 1 and 2, up 1 and 2, plug those values in. And we get some points, 0, 3, 1, 0, 2, negative 1, 3, 0, and 4, 3. And we'll draw it and put a little curve in it. And presto, we have a parabola. Now hopefully you noticed on these two parabolas that you either have a bottom point, like in this one, or a topmost point, like in that one. Okay. The y value is going to tell you either the max or the min for the function. So one thing we'll have to do is be able to tell whether we have a maximum or minimum. If your a number is positive, then the function has a minimum. If your a is negative, then it has a maximum. You can see that looking at the two graphs we just made. So they're going to give us some functions here, and they're going to ask us, do we have a max or a min? What is it? And then state, domain, and range. Well, first, let's figure out if we have a max or a min. We look at a. a is 4, which is positive, so the function has a minimum. To find it, we need to find the vertex. So we do our opposite b over 2a. Plug that into the formula, into the uh, function they gave us. Do a little arithmetic, and we find out that the minimum is negative 25. For a parabola, your domain is always going to be all real numbers. Your range, since it's a minimum, that's the lowest value. Everything else is above that. So y is greater than or equal to negative 25. Okay. We're going to let you pause and practice the same skill. You're going to determine again if it's a max or a min, find it, and then domain and range. Well, our a is negative 4. Since it's negative, it means we have a maximum. We'll do our opposite b over 2a. Get a value for x to plug back into the function. And my trusty calculator gave me an answer of 12. Since 12 is the maximum, the range is everything below 12, so y is less than or equal to 12, and again, domain is all real. We have one more problem. It's an application idea. Eddie is organizing a charity poker tournament, and he's planning to charge $20 in entry fee for each of the 80 players in the field. He's talked to some of the players, and he's figured out that if he raises the price to get in by $5, he's going to lose five people playing. If he raised it $10, he would lose 10 people. $15, 15 people. So his job here is to figure out how much should he charge to get the maximum amount of money for the charity, and how much money can he get. Well, hopefully you're 
you can see that the amount of money he makes is how much he charges times the number of players that are in the field. Okay. He's starting at $20 and getting 80 players. He's going to raise it some amount of money, $5 times X, because we don't know how many times yet. And when he does, he's going to lose 5 players times X. This is a quadratic function. It just doesn't look like the way we're used to. So I'm going to distribute that out and collect, and I'm going to rearrange it so that it's in the right order, ax squared plus bx plus c. And I'm very relieved to see a negative right there because that tells me there's a maximum. Let's find that maximum. That means we need the vertex. That means opposite b over 2a. And we get a value for x, which is 6. Okay. We'll plug the 6 into the function. And the calculator comes out that that is $2,500 that he can raise for the charity. How much should he charge each player? We'll plug the 6 for x back into the entry fee part. 5 times 6 is 30, plus 20 is 50 bucks. He charges $50 a player, he makes $2,500 for the charity. So fairly straightforward, just follow your formulas. Your negative b over 2a is your biggest weapon. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down, bring them in, and we'll see you in class.